You can see with these four examples that there's a wide variety of uses that wood has been put to for as long as man has been building houses and any sort of structure. Now while we're at it doing the wood, I'll also pick up a few little techniques on painting rust on things like hinges and, uh, and gate posts and, and what have you. On. Right, now we've put a bit of raw sienna and Payne's grey into the inside of the stable just to give a hint that there's something going on. Now although this looks like a fairly scruffy palette and lots of different coloured mud, in fact it provides some the basis for some great colours for wood and here I've got some burnt umber and here we've got some ultramarine blue and you can see right away just by mixing those together, very very pale, we create the ideal mix for this well weathered silvery looking wood. By dragging it out like that and deliberately hitting and missing that gives some excellent highlights that we're going to exploit in a moment or two. You can see the way I've actually painted the top of the door quite uh, rounded and misshapen and this is literally where the horses necks over the years as they've leaned out of the uh, stable have rubbed away at the top of the door so it's a nice little detail to replicate. You can see I'm only using the number 8 round brush and I'm just doing individual planks. You notice I'm not just whapping over the whole lot. You can see I've just run, I'm just going over that, a very fine line to represent a crack that's right down the centre of this beam. I'm just reinforcing a little bit of a, a knot now I've taken some more paint out and I've just started dragging the brush down these uprights like that. You can see how that works. It just deposits a very small amount of paint on and gives a nice sort of vertical texture. Uh, what I do want to make sure is that the hair is spread out slightly as I drag it down like that. You can see how light a touch is needed and hardly any paint on that at all. Don't forget, you're trying to create an impression. You're not going to create every little groove and fissure in every plank. Okay, and now you can see I'm just using the tip of the brush and I'm just moving my hand up the page with each little plank and just putting the merest touch of a thin line in there just to represent the lines of the plank. It doesn't matter if those lines aren't absolutely deadly straight, it all adds to the rustic atmosphere. Take the bottom of the planks and just paint round with a little bit of dark and that gives the impression that bit by bit the bottom of these planks are starting to chip and wear away. Older rust is actually much nearer the burnt umber colour than it is the light red colour. Light red is much more indicative of newer rust but what we're going to do because we're working in watercolour we work back to front and we'll put the lighter rust colour on first and then add to it with some of the burnt umber. So right away I'm going into that with that nice bright red. Right now we're going in with some of the burnt umber mixed with the light red and again I'm blotting out and then dabbing straight back in. I'll do the same again here and here. Just a simple streak of colour, just blot some out. Now there's a little detail you might get to show where the bracket, this securing bracket is sort of pivoted at different times and rust has run down in all sorts of different areas, almost in an arc. Just blot out like that. In fact you can leave some of that staining because don't forget the rain as it hits the hinge will wash some of that rust into the grooves within some of those planks. Oh and just before I forget there was a little hint of some old red paint just a few little flecks here and there just knocking around just left on the wood. Again it's, a, it's another little dry brush effect if you like that you can put on. The door is shut, it looks like the horse has bolted, but looking at that beam, perhaps it knows something that you and I don't. Right, now let's move on to the farm gate. In many respects, the textures and the techniques we're using are very similar to what we've used in the stable door. Now I'm going to do the hinges in a sort of a galvanised metal that are perhaps a little bit newer than these hinges. A little bit of rust here and there, but not nearly so much. 
by painting each of the faces of each of the individual posts you end up with that just a little subtle hit and miss effect and that gives you a much more believable post because those little light patches that start to emerge as the paint dries will actually help to if you like draw the outline of the uh, the post itself now while that's still damp I'll very quickly put in just a touch of a little bit of moss that's just in the areas underneath where the sun don't shine I'm going to say that the, the lights coming from the right so to give a subtle shadow I'm just using a little bit of uh, burnt umber I've taken most of the uh, what's off on the brush you see it gives a texture at the same time as creating the nice shadow effect right we'll just distress the post at top there because the rain will run on that and gradually rot the rot the top of the post away so you'll get a lot of moss on around there and yeah and that's you can see that's given that nice blue gray that you get on a relatively new galvanized hinge right now before I forget we'll just do a little bit of dark on the the bolts underneath really where the lights coming from oh we mustn't forget a couple of uh, rusty nail spots where it's been secured to the center post so there we are there's a the wooden gate and the slightly less rusty galvanized metal hinges